Hi guys, this is math six, lesson eight dash six, choosing appropriate statistical measures. In this lesson, we'll be able to select and use appropriate statistical measures. Let's look at solve and discuss it. The prices in dollars of athletic shoes in one store are shown below. Does the mean, median, or mode best describe the typical price for shoes at this store? So here are the values of our prices. We got, let's order this from least to greatest. So we got 50, 50, 50, and then 60, and then we got 75, and we got 80 and 90. Two, four, six, seven. So we got seven data. And we wanna we wanna figure out all, all mean, median, and mode. Okay. So the mean, how do you figure out the mean? You can figure out the mean by adding all of them up. So 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 60 plus 75 plus 80 plus 90 divided by seven is going to be 65. So mean is 65. That's your average price. What do you, how do you figure out the median? You count the middle number, right? So 50, 50, 50, 90, 80, 75. And that's your median. Median is $60. $60. And then mode, which price appears the most? So we have three 50s, right? So basically 50 is our mode. All right, so which one describes our data the best? for the typical price of shoes, typical price. So if you look at the percentage of shoes um, that has the same price, typically it's 50 if you're using the mode, but on average, if you're talking about the average, you can say typically it's gonna be about 65 when you're thinking about, oh, how much should I bring? So typically, if you bring 65, you'll probably be able to choose um, several options from that, right? And yeah, so it really depends. It really depends um, on which uh, mean, median, or mode, which measures you're using, right? So you can either say the mean is the best, some shoes cost less than $65 and some cost more. And you say the higher priced shoes influence or what was another option? You say the mode Um, the most number of shoes with the same price is $50. So typically it's $50. So you can, you can say either, right? And you can, you can also say 50 is also the lowest price. So the mode is the best if you're thinking about the lowest price. Also 50 is the lowest. So the mode. Okay. There are different reasons, but you need to be able to back up with your reasons. All right, let's look at focus on math practices. Which measure would the store most likely use in its advertising? Explain why this measure should be used. 
the store will most likely advertise. This is the price. Which one is it? The most, the cheapest one, because if, if people see the cheaper price, they'll be like, oh, I want to go and get it. But then they see all the other shoes and be like, actually, I want these shoes. These shoes look better and they'll spend more money. So that's typically how advertising works. The mode. The lowest price would attract more Okay. So essential question, why is one statistical measure uh, more useful than another to describe given situation? So given situation is gonna vary which statistical measure would be the best. So it depends on how you wanna use it. So if you're advertising, um, you might wanna use the mode here, but if you're not advertising, um, you just want to find a general price out of all the shoes, then you want to use the mean. Or what's the middle price? You want to use the median, right? So it really depends on how you want to use it. Let's look at example one. Choose the best measure of center to describe a data set. Gary reviews the scores on his weekly quizzes. What measure should Gary use to get the best sense of how well he is doing on his weekly quizzes. So what does the distribution of the data in the dot plot tell you about the shape of the data? So we got some scores that he have, um, an outlier, 65. Ooh, that's, that's a very low score, but generally he has higher scores, right? Um, so the, so 65 is actually an outlier. An outlier is a data value that is very different from the other values, very different. So you can display his scores in, dot, um, in a dot plot, and you can see that 65 is definitely an outlier. Most of his data is within this range, 85 and 90, uh, 98. But 65 is way back right? That's like the only point. So 65 is an outlier. It lies outside most of the other values in the data set. And the values in the data set are spread out. These are, there are gaps in the values on the dot plot, right? So we're going to find the mean, median, and mode to figure out if, um, if which one describes his um, data the best. The, so just keep in mind the outlier causes the mean to be less than the values of the largest group of the data. So if you don't count the outlier, it's probably going to be an average of these. But if you have an outlier, then it's your average is going to get significantly less. So the best measure to use is the median because the outlier does not affect the median because you just look at the middle number. Right, so that's the mean. Mean is the lowest here. Median is here, and mode is there. Mode is like your two best scores, um, so that's not accurate. Mean is lower than what you would expect. So in this sense, your median would be the best to look at and um, and feel like, oh, this is how I usually get. Okay, so let's look at try it. If Gary scored a seventy on his next weekly quiz, how would that affect his mean score? So if he got 70 on the next one, how would the mean change? Definitely lower because 70 is way lower than the mean he has right now, right? So his mean score, would decrease. His mean score would be 87, which is less than 87 from the original mean that we have. 
Okay. Convince me. Gary says that he usually scores 98 on his weekly quiz. What measure of center did Gary use? Explain. So if he says, I usually score 98, what, which one is he using? 98 is right here. He used the mode. So if he scored 98 for two quizzes and that's his mode, then that's where he came from. Gary used the data value that occurred most often to describe the score that he usually receives but his average is way lower than that. Okay, next page, example two. Choose the best measure of variability to describe a data set. John and Yoshi are computer lab partners. During a spreadsheet project, they decide to enter their French quiz scores on their shaded tablet. Okay. So part A, choose a measure of variability and use it to describe John's quiz scores. So John has all of these data. So his uh, scores contain an outlier 65, but most of his data is like pretty good, right? So, um, so the median is a better measure because the outlier will affect his mean. Okay, so you're gonna use the IQR because IQR is dealing with the median. What is, what is the measure of variability that deals with the mean? It's the MAD mean after deviation, okay? So for John, we're gonna use IQR uh, when the median is appropriate. So the first quartile um, is 87, third quartile 93. And so IQR could be, could be figured out by subtracting your first quartile from the third quartile, that's gonna be six. So you can say at least half of John's quiz scores are between 87 and 93. So this accurately describes how his scores are clustered. So that looks about right, yeah? Well, part B, choose a measure of variability and use it to describe Yoshi's quiz scores. So for him, he doesn't really have an outlier. So it is, it is um, appropriate to use the mean. So um, there's no outlier. The mean 84 is a good measure of center for her data. And we're gonna use the MAD, the, the mean after deviation, um, when the mean is appropriate measure of center. So MAD could be used when we figure out all the distances of those points to your mean. So your mean is 84. So 80 minus 84 absolute value is your distance from your average, right? For that point. So that's four. And that's four. And that's two, two. Wait, wait. Yeah, two, two, zero, zero, two, two, four, four. So these are all the distances away from your mean. You're gonna add that divided by 10 to get the mean of the mean of the mean of the distances to the mean, okay? So that's gonna be 2.4. So you can say Yoshi scores are typically within 2.4 points of her mean score of 84. So after you determine um, which one is the better measure, is it the mean or the median? To describe the variability, you're gonna find the IQR when you're using the median, you're gonna use the MAD when you're using the mean. And then after you figure out IQR and MAD, you should be able to say that in words and interpret and explain, okay? So when you figure out IQR, you're gonna describe at least half of the data or between what and what, right? Um, and then when you figure out MAD, you're gonna say, oh, they're typically within your MAD point of the mean score of your mean, okay? That's how you describe I, using your IQR and your MAD. And right, let's look at try a question. Suppose the French teacher says that she will drop each student's lowest quiz score. 
Would the MAD now be a good measure of variability for John's quiz scores? Calculate the MAD without John's lowest score and use it to justify your answer. If, if the teacher's gonna drop the student's lowest quiz score, then John doesn't have an outlier um, now, right? So 65 is gone, which means he doesn't have an outlier. So using mean would be a good measure. So the so let's fill in the blanks. Um, John's lowest score is 65, right? Without the lowest score, John's mean score is 87, 87, you add them all up and divide by nine now, okay? And the mean score should be 90 and four over nine. So the MAD is the distances, uh, distances of the points to the mean. That's gonna be three, four, nine, plus three, four, nine, plus two, four, nine, plus four, nine, plus five, nine, plus one, five, nine, plus two, five, nine, and plus two, five, nine, and plus two, five, nine, again. So you're gonna find, this is the distances of these points except 65, these points to your mean score 94, nine. okay? And then you add them up and divide it by nine. When you add them all up, you get 19 and five, nine. If you divide it by nine, you get two and 14 over 81, okay? So I know that's a little bit complicated, but that's okay. We can use that to interpret our John's mean score. So John's mean score describes his overall score as well now because we don't have the outlier. So the MAD would be a good measure. The MAD is two and 14 over 81, which is close to two and one fourth. So John's scores are typically within about 2.25 points of his. Okay. So that's great. Now we know how to determine which one is a good measure. So let's summarize our um, lesson. Key concept, the statistical measure that's most appropriate to describe the center and variability of data assets should be chosen based on an analysis of the spread, clustering, and outliers in the data set. So you need to be able to figure out the mean, median, and mode and see which one is the most appropriate. And if your mean is the most appropriate, you can use MAD to, to um, describe the variability. If the mode is the most appropriate, you can use the IQR to measure uh, the variability. That was lesson 8-6, choosing appropriate statistical measures. Um, the next lesson, in our last lesson of topic 8, we'll summarize data distributions. If you have any more questions, please ask Ms. King in class. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.